What's up guys, Cliff here from The Sunday Drive, and today is the first video in a multi-part series that I've been looking forward to and dreading at the same time for a very long time. We're gonna be deleting the AFM system in my 2014 Silverado with the 5.3 liter and upgrading a lot of other parts along the way and hopefully make a little bit more power. So today for part one, we're gonna go over the baseline dyno numbers. So if you aren't already aware, the 2014 and newer Chevy Silverados and GMC Sierras, as well as a lot of the other GM vehicles, have what is known as Displacement On Demand, DOD, or Active Fuel Management, AFM. And what this system allows the vehicle to do is operate in four-cylinder or eight-cylinder mode, giving you a little bit better fuel economy. The downside to this system is that some of the components required for active fuel management to work can fail, leading to ultimately engine failure. And now that I'm outside of the uh, warranty period on my vehicle. I want to fully delete this system from the truck and this isn't just a coding out of the system. You can code it out um, but that doesn't prevent the failure from happening. The only way to guarantee that it won't happen is to physically delete the system and that requires replacing the camshaft as well as the lifters and some of the other components while you're in there. Now as you can see I have a lot of parts sitting out in front of me. I'm not going to go through all of these parts in detail. Um, we'll be doing that in a second part of this video series, which should be coming out next week. Um, but today, I want to go over my baseline dyno numbers. So the way this is going to work is I did a baseline on the truck. We're going to go over those numbers in a minute. Once I install the heads, I have ported heads from GPI and a new Stage 1 camshaft. We're going to re-baseline the truck after tuning it and see how much of a power bump we got. After doing that, we're going to go to a 6.2 liter uh, intake manifold and throttle body, as well as an aftermarket air, air intake. And then we're going to see how much the truck dynos with those enhancements as well. So we're going to try to give you as much information as possible so you guys can decide how best to spend your money for the performance you're looking for. Um, but I'm really excited to start this process. As I mentioned, I'm also nervous. There's a lot involved, as you guys are going to see. Um, and I'm going to see as we do this project together. So now that you have an idea of what videos are coming down the road, let's get into what this video is about the baseline numbers on my truck. Now this truck is completely stock, except for an aftermarket catch can. If you guys wanna know how to install that, check out the video at the link above. So we did three consecutive dyno runs, as you guys can see here. Uh, the first dyno run had a max torque of 360, uh, 360 again for the second one, and the final one was at 364, so pretty consistent there. The horsepower numbers were also consistent at 329, 329, and 333. Um, now, we are in New Jersey. This is at sea level, was done on a Mustang dyno, um, and the ambient temperature was somewhere in the, the low 40s. So there were some caveats to the dyno run that we did, so we're going to explain that a little bit right now. The tuner told me that the truck would not hold fourth gear, and that's the closest to the one-to-one -one ratio. I believe it's a one 0.15 ratio in fourth gear, which is the closest to a one-to-one. -one. Because of that, he did a run from first through third gear, and the graph that we're gonna overlay right now is from 65 miles an hour to 95 miles an hour. I've been bugging him back and forth trying to get an RPM graph, as well as the full uh, mile per hour graph from zero all the way up to 95. So by the time this video comes out, I may have those. If not, We'll either do a subsequent video or have links down in the description of this video where you can see those dyno graphs. We'll also have a link to a baseline dyno run of a 1500 with the 5.3 liter uh, that we found, which should also help you with your comparisons. Now, because this wasn't a traditional run where we were in a single gear, the data is a little bit limited to know what my true horsepower is because now you're dealing with gear ratios of the transmission and it's gonna affect the numbers a little bit. However, because we are gonna to go to the same tuner, the same dyno run, at the end, we can do an apples to apples comparison where we see what our stock power numbers were and what our new powers numbers were so we can see what the increase is. And ultimately, that is what the goal. You wanna know how much extra horsepower and torque you get from adding additional mods to your vehicle. It would be nice to know what the true number is and maybe someone smarter than me can interpret uh, this graph a little bit better than I have been checking on the forums and talking with some people and there's lots of different opinions about how I could pull uh, some more useful information from the graph but I will leave that up to you guys I don't want to put out anything that's not accurate so for now we're going to leave this at what it is these were the numbers that I got from my first to third pull and we will see what uh, comes out when we do the follow-up run after installing the heads and cam. Now the reason the dyno run stops at 95 miles an hour is that's actually where the truck 
is factory limited to. And unless you change out your drive shaft, you really shouldn't go past that. Now, I do know that some Silverados have went past that uh, with the stock drive shaft, but you do risk the integrity of your drive shaft uh, when you go past that factory limiter. Um, depending on the tires you also have on the truck, uh, especially if you're still running on the ones that came from the dealer, uh, most likely those are not speed rated to over 95 miles an hour either. They might be a little bit higher, but they are truck tires. They're not expecting you to be racing the vehicle. So definitely check out the speed rating on your tires before you push it too much higher. So that's it guys. This video was really to intro you to the series that we have coming out on the channel. Um, we're trying to do this video series a little bit differently. Sometimes we bite off more than we can chew with a single shot. Currently, we're editing a lift video we did on my buddy's 2017 Silverado. We have 400 video clips for that that we're trying to sync audio to and edit. It's just very time consuming. So we're trying to do this video a little bit smaller since it is also a big process and split it up into um, bite-sized chunks that we can get out quickly to you guys. Um, and not hate our lives as we try to edit this. So we will be getting that lift video out to you guys. We did a Skyjacker lift um, on a Silverado. Um, it turned out really good. It's just a lot of content to go through. So hopefully we can get that up to you pretty quickly. But I wanted to get this upgrade done on my truck before the winter time. I don't wanna have any failures over the winter. I have a 2012 Camaro with summer tires on there and that does not do well in the snow so hopefully we get this done quickly and get these video guys out videos out to you quickly as well um, just as a little bonus for any of you guys that uh, made it this far in the video you may notice that i'm wearing two microphones we're uh, actually trying out a brand new mic this little lapel right here and we're hoping it works out well if it does we're going to do a, a detailed review on it uh, for any of you guys that are considering about shooting videos so um, like i said for that uh, lift video, all the audio was done through a standalone mic and trying to sync all that audio back to the camera has just been a nightmare. So we knew for this video with all of the content that was going to be part of it, we needed a better solution. So we'll definitely keep you guys updated about this microphone. Uh, it's a Pico mic and we will let you guys know how that works out uh, for good or for bad. So hopefully the audio is a lot easier for us to sync so we can get these videos out to you guys a little bit faster. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of comments about this. Definitely go through the links I have in the description. There's a lot involved with this. Do research. Don't let this be the only video you watch or the only video series you watch. We're going to be as comprehensive as we can be. However, um, there may be things that we miss. So definitely leave comments, any questions you have below. We will do our best to answer them. Um, we went and talked to a lot of people before starting this that were familiar with the process um, just to educate ourselves as much as possible. So do your research, do your homework. Um, in part two of this video, we're going to go through all of these parts in detail, show you what we picked, why we picked it, um, and then we're going to start working on the truck. So thanks for watching, and we will see you guys here for part two.